I was a communist for the FBI. Starring Dana Andrews in an exciting tale of danger and espionage, I was a communist for the FBI. Many of the incidents in the story you are about to hear are based on the actual records and authentic experiences of Matt Savetic, who for nine fantastic years lived as a communist for the FBI. Here is our star, Dana Andrews, as Matt Savetic. A night of terror that stretched out for nine long years. That was my experience as a communist for the FBI. I feared and hated every minute of it. But believe me, mister... You'd fear and hate it a lot more if the communists ever got control of this country. Because fear and hate is the basis of my story. And it may surprise you to learn that without knowing it, you're helping to finance your own terror. In a moment, listen to Dana Andrews as Matt Sabatic, Undercover Man. as Matt Savatic, Undercover Man. This story from the confidential file is marked The Red Octopus. After the comrade has given me my orders and left, I walk to a chair and sit down heavily. I've been scared before, but never as badly as this. I'm under orders to report to the Communist Control Committee in New York. And the control committee is the American Communist Secret Police, the dispensers of party discipline. Later, when I have my nerves under better control, I phone the FBI and arrange to be picked up for a conference. I'm at the designated corner long before the agent drives up and stops in front of me. Get in, Matt. Thanks. What's wrong, boy? You look as though you've been in a fight. Oh, just nervous. I cut myself shaving. The Red Control Committee wants me in New York. When? Immediately. And I've been ordered to advise all my local contacts not to worry about me. I may be gone indefinitely. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> There's the understatement of the week. It sounds as though I've slipped somewhere. And the comrades are going to give me the works. Yeah. Well, you got any suggestions? No, Matt. I'm going to pass the buck to you. If you accept this party invitation, it'll have to be as a volunteer. You mean I have a choice? Well, the Bureau isn't going to order you to commit suicide. Somehow I don't find that very consoling. But naturally, Matt, if you do decide to follow party orders and meet with the control committee, our New York office will give you all possible protection. In other words, you really want me to go? There's always the chance you might pick up some vital information. Yeah, I know. You think it over, Matt. If you decide against going, nobody in the Bureau will think any less of you. But naturally, it'll end your value as an undercover man. Yeah. Well, let me out of the next corner, will you? Sure. You made up your mind already? No, that's, that's why I want out. Maybe if I walk around a little, I can think this out better. You let me know what you decide as soon as possible, Matt? Yeah, I'll call you in the morning. Good. I have a long ways to walk back to my place. But even walking can't help the kind of thinking that I have to do. Maybe the control committee isn't just setting me up to knock me down. Maybe I'm going to be given an assignment that will be vitally important to the fight against communism. Maybe I'll be given an assignment that looks important, but is really a trap. Maybe. Maybe I'm going nuts. I'm all the way home, and I haven't decided what to do. Then I open the door of my room, and a decision is made for me. Comrade Svetlik, 
Yes? I am Comrade Miller, Comrade Svetlik, sent by the control committee to escort you back to New York. Escort me to New York? You didn't get the orders? Oh, yes, but just an hour or so ago, and they didn't say anything about anyone coming for me. I know. But recent disturbing information leaks prompted the committee to take no chances in this case. Well, I, I was supposed to notify all my local contacts that I, I might be away indefinitely. You can write them from New York. Now, please get your things together. I have reservations for us on a plane that leaves a little after midnight. Oh, a plane? Oh, I was going to take a bus. A bus makes too many stops. I see. Well, it sounds as though I've suddenly become pretty important to the control committee. Hmm. Very important, Comrade Svetik. When Miller says that, I want to slug him and run. But where can a communist run and find safety? Besides, Miller's a big man, a real control committee goon. And if I didn't knock him out with the first punch, my trying to escape would convict me of every crime in the party book. So I pack and go to the airport with Miller without a chance to notify the FBI that I'm leaving. Aboard the plane, I try to find out why I'm being taken to New York. But Miller won't talk. The first information I get comes to me in the bleak, soundproofed interrogation chamber of the control committee, where Comrade Miller leaves me with Comrade Rice. Sit down, Comrade Svetik. Well, I don't mind standing, Comrade Rice. Suit yourself. What's all this about? First, I get orders to report to the control committee, then before I can follow the orders... I'm picked up and brought here. This is a very serious matter, Comrade Svetik. It was decided that we must move quickly and take no chances. I've been through that with Comrade Miller. What's the charge? Charge, Comrade? Why, there's no charge at the moment. Oh. Then why have I been hauled around like a party criminal? Believe me, Comrade, we don't transport party criminals by plane. You're here for an extremely delicate assignment. An assignment. It catches me by surprise, and I sink into the chair I'd refused just a moment ago. Then I look up and I see Comrade Rice watching me closely. I tell him, I'm, I'm sorry, I suddenly felt very tired. Don't apologize, Comrade Svetik. Here at the control committee, we see that reaction frequently. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. As for your assignment, Comrade Svetik, uh, what do you know about a Comrade Hillman? Hillman? Why... Oh, I know that there's one who heads the party's commercial enterprises. That's the one. Have you ever had any contact with him? No. Why? We have reason to believe that Comrade Hillman has been injuring the party by using his position for his own financial interests. In fact, we're sure of it. But we can't prove it. So? So we brought you to New York to get that proof. Well, I thought Hillman operated out of New Orleans. He does, normally, but... He has such great organizational ability that we brought him to New York to direct our operation against the waterfront. Now he seems to feel that he's bigger than the party. How's that? Hillman can give you the details. He's too useful to destroy, but he has to be controlled. We're assigning you to him as his assistant to get concrete evidence which will justify our disciplining him. Am I the first to be given this assignment, Comrade Rice? No, there have been others. Hmm. The waterfront is not a drawing room, Comrade Svetik. There's always violence there. And Hillman's assistants are always in the middle. In the middle of what? Whatever comes up. So far, those who have tried to remain faithful and fulfill their obligations to the party have somehow run afoul of Hillman's friends in the MVD. Those who have switched their allegiance to Hillman have been dealt with by the committee. Doesn't sound like a great future. We're hoping, Comrade Svetik, that you will be more clever and luckier than those who have preceded you. If I'd been luckier, you'd never have called me. <laughs> Perhaps we thought you were more clever. That crack doesn't make me feel either lucky or clever. And if I didn't like the setup before, I want no part of it now. This is strictly a pigeon trap, and I'm the pigeon. But there's no backing out. While these thoughts are racing through my mind, Rice calls Comrade Miller in and orders him to take me to Comrade Hillman. Then we walk through a miserable, foggy night to a dingy waterfront office where I meet Comrade Hillman. Well, Comrade Miller, 
What do I owe the uh, pleasure of this visit? I brought you an assistant, Comrade Hillman. Another? The control committee feels that Comrade Svetik could learn a lot from watching your operations. I see. Well, in that case, welcome to the waterfront, Comrade Svetik. Thank you, Comrade Hillman. Where would the control committee like to have Comrade Svetik start? Oh, we'll leave that to you. Just be sure he gets a clear picture of everything you're doing here. That goes without saying, Comrade. Oh, good. I will expect to hear from you later this evening, Comrade Svetik. All right. I'll see that he gets away in plenty of time. Thank you. <laughs> Did I miss something <laughs> funny, Comrade <Hillman? laughs> oh, Something very funny, Comrade Svetik. <laughs> Well, if you're not going to let me in on it, maybe you'd better start briefing me on the project. Oh, well, it's quite simple. Our job has a dual purpose. To infiltrate the waterfront with party members and so be in a position to delay the shipping of war goods. And uh, to fatten the party's finances. How's that done? By taking over unions and siphoning off dues? (laughs) Nothing so petty, comrade. Our party members on the docks have access to warehouses where quantities of valuable goods are stored. These goods we distribute through party-controlled manufacturing and retail outlets at uh, considerable profit. You mean the Communist Party is officially sponsoring these waterfront thefts? Oh, certainly not, Comrade Svetty. Huh? I've set up a separate organization to handle this business, an organization which you, as my assistant, will head. Then if anything goes wrong, I'm the patsy, huh? Well, there's always that chance. However, according to the newspapers, these wholesale thefts are all part of the uh, unsavory waterfront mess. In other words, the party gets the money. Someone else gets the blame. That's about right. And it's a perfect setup. But now fools like Comrade Miller want this gold mine stopped. Well, I haven't been told anything about any part of this. What's their reasoning? The big heat's on and they're afraid. You're going to have to choose sides before tomorrow night, Comrade Svetik. What do you mean? The control committee has put you in a spot where you can't stay neutral. You're either with me or you're against me. You don't have much time to choose. I don't have much choice either, do I? (laughs) Oh, yes. You can choose between Comrade Miller, who handles waterfront discipline for the control committee, and Comrade Brosky, who performs the same duties for my friends in the MVD. They're both magicians when it comes to making men disappear. Dana Andrews, starring as Matt Severick in I Was a Communist for the FBI and the second act of our story. While I'm considering the unlovely choice that Comrade Hillman has offered me, a chance to disappear at the hands of either the control committee or the MVD... He goes on to the next step in communist technique, the technique which offers inescapable punishment and possible reward to any person or country whose cooperation is needed. The possible reward he offered me was definitely negative, a mere possible chance to avoid trouble. This operation, Comrade Svetik, is temporary and picayune in comparison to my regular job. I understand that you had all the party's commercial enterprises. Oh, yes, you name it. I operated. Would you like to be part of it? Well, sounds like a spot where a guy could pick up a fast buck for himself without crossing party interest. (laughs) Now, the party's never suffered. And uh, I've done very well for myself. Really? Yeah, yeah. But don't get any ideas about denouncing me, comrade. I would deny it. It would be your word against mine. And I have some very powerful friends in both the Comintern and the MVD. I have some friends on the control committee. Naturally. Your predecessors had friends, too. Yet none of them survived a single report that recommended action against me. Quite a coincidence. Yes, coincidence. 
Well, what do you intend to report to the committee? That, so far, you've been very helpful and informative, Comrade Hillman. <laughs> yeah, we'll be sure you don't go any farther than that, huh? We'll discuss this again in the morning, after you've made your report. After I've made my report. Nice spot, isn't it? Hillman's as good as told me that he's using the party for his own financial gain, but I can't prove it. And if I try, Hillman's MVD friends will knock me off. As far as I can see, there's only one thing for me to do, and that's run for it. Then just as I leave the waterfront, a car pulls up in front of me and the door's thrown open, and inside says... Get in, Svetic. There's nothing else I can do, so I get in. I'm Ryan Svetic with a bureau here in New York. Here are my credentials. Well, how did you know I was here? One of our men covering your airport saw you board the plane there and phoned ahead. We've had a tail on you ever since you landed in New York. After Ryan hears my report, he asks me to stay with the assignment and to string along with Hillman. We've known about this waterfront business for some time, Matt, but we don't have enough men to cover every dock and warehouse every night. I can understand that. Be a real blow to the Reds if you could help us catch them in the act. Hillman particularly. We could jail the gang involved, confiscate their property. Be a real big step toward buttoning up the waterfront operation. Well, I'll see what I can do. I can't understand why the committee hasn't arranged to have Hillman just disappear. Say. Yeah? Hillman must have a friend on the committee who tips him off on reports made against him. If I knew who that guy was... We'll put a 24-hour tail on Hillman immediately and see who contacts him after you've made this first report. After Ryan gives me an emergency phone number to call, just in case, he lets me out. And I go before the committee and make my non-committal report on Comrade Hillman. I try to say nothing that can be used against me by either side. I'm apparently successful... At any rate, the committee doesn't reprimand me, and when I walk into Hillman's office the next morning, I get a very friendly reception. Well, your report was very satisfactory to me, Comrade Svedek. I think we'll get along. I hope the committee's satisfied, too. Yeah, according to my information, there weren't any openly adverse comments. They may question me more closely next time. They want this warehouse looting stopped before the party's publicly involved. This waterfront operation is much more important than a few dollars. Well, you'll know all the answers, but I don't think you'll give them to the committee. I know that. But how can you be so sure? <laughs> because before you leave this office, you're going to call the party's trucking company and order eight vans to be at Warehouse 23 at 10.30 tonight. Go on. At 10.15 tonight, you will go to Warehouse 23. There you'll be contacted by a man who'll identify himself as Comrade Brosky, the warehouse watchman. Oh, that's convenient. Oh, very. As soon as the trucks arrive, you will help Comrade Brusky load them with the warehouse goods he indicates. You aren't afraid of my getting this evidence and turning it against you? No, Comrade. Because before you leave here, you're also going to call the committee and clear the use of the trucks, certifying that they're to be used for regular party business. Now, I don't think you'll give me any trouble. No. I don't believe I will. Good. Make your phone calls and then go and get some rest. We're going to have a busy night ahead of us. I have a busy night ahead of me, all right. And when it's all over, Hillman will be able to shift the party's disciplinary action from himself to me. Because this theft will be my responsibility. After clearing the trucks while Hillman listens, I go out and away from the waterfront. And as soon as I think I'm safe... I call the emergency number that Ryan gave me and make my report to the FBI. This is the break we've been looking for, Matt. Well, the, the break I'm looking for is a chance to get out of this with my neck. Yeah, I can imagine. Say, we think we learned the identity of Hillman's contact on the committee. Who is it? A guy named Justin. According to our operative, he's the only committee member known to us who's contacted Hillman since you made your report. Well, that's good news. Yeah, at least you know your enemy. Yeah, and that may be the break I'm looking for as well as the one the Bureau wants. Oh, what do you have in mind, Matt? Well, it isn't clear yet, and it may not work at all. I'll call you back this afternoon. I have an idea, all right, if I'm lucky, and it works. 
I'll be a party hero. Everything depends on the accuracy of the FBI's assumption that Comrade Houston is Hillman's contact on the committee. It isn't easy to keep the nervous quiver out of my voice when I talk to Comrade Rice. Why aren't you with Comrade Hillman, Comrade Svedek? I can't tell you that, Comrade Rice, until you agree to one condition. What is it? Before I make any statement, bring Comrade Houston here. And hold him incommunicado until tomorrow morning. But Comrade Houston's a member of the control committee. I know that. And I want you to arrest him. And me. Before I tell you anything more. This is a weird request. It's a weird situation. And if I refuse it? Then I don't know a thing, Comrade. I think I see what you're driving at, Comrade Svetik. And since you've asked to be placed under arrest, too, I'll accept your condition. I hope for your sake that your information concerning Comrade Houston is correct. Now, what's your charge against him? He is your information leak to Hillman. Can you prove it? <laughs> I hope so. At any rate, he gave Hillman the details of my report to the committee, a report I deliberately made non-committal. This is still just words. I'll give you more than just words. After my report... Hillman took me into his confidence to the extent of ordering me to steal a shipment of merchandise from Warehouse 23 at 10.30 tonight. Is that what you cleared those trucks for? That's right. With Hillman standing right next to me. But how could he expect to get away with it? Justin is the key. As long as he was free to warn Hillman, you could never catch them. They must have been splitting up a large share of the loot. Oh. But how can we catch Hillman in the act? Couldn't Justin be... Persuaded to call Hillman at the last moment tonight and tell him that you had placed me under arrest and that Hillman will have to supervise the job himself? Comrade Houston can be persuaded to do anything. As to whether or not Hillman will accept his suggestion, well, uh, your future depends on that. Now I start the real sweat. Comrade Rice has accepted my plan so readily that I begin to wonder if maybe he's Hillman's contact. And when he tells me to go to my hotel room alone, I watch my step crossing every street for fear he has an accident planned for me. Nothing happens the first three or four blocks, though, and I can't find a shadow trailing me. So I duck into a phone booth and call the FBI. Brian speaking. This is Matt. Go ahead. I won't be at the warehouse. Thanks. We'll clean it up. At my hotel, I'm joined by Comrade Miller, the control committee muscle man. We spend the afternoon and evening playing cards, but my mind isn't on it. I'm thinking of Hillman and Rice and the FBI and what'll happen to me if anything goes wrong. Ah, beats me again. You know, for a guy who says he doesn't have his mind in the game, Comrade, you play a lot of roaming. Well, I've been lucky. You'll be more than lucky if your tip to the committee works out. Yeah. It is almost 11. We should know something very soon. Oh, shut up, will you? Sure. Whose deal is it? Oh, I don't care. I don't care. All right. I'll do. Didn't you say Comrade Rice told you that he'd be here by 11? We've got a couple of minutes here. Don't rush the undertaker. Why did you say that? Say what? About the undertaker. Do you know something that I don't? What are you talking about? Look at your cards. But I... I Look, wanna... comrade, in your spot, you either win or you lose. So forget your problems. Play cards. I'll get it. Stay away from the door. Huh? Comrade Rice is holding me responsible for you being here when he arrives. One way or another, you will be here. I'll get the door. Where is he? Oh... Well, Comrade Svetik. Yes? You are right. You caught Hillman in the act. We saw him, but the FBI caught him. The FBI? Yes. The greedy idiot cost the party more tonight than he ever earned for it. The FBI caught him, Comrade Brosky, and the eight truck drivers. They'll give Hillman a chance to talk to save himself. He'll tell them everything he knows about the party and its operation. That sounds like quite a mess. The FBI must have had pretty complete information. Very complete information, obviously. I wonder... What? Comrade Justin. If he worked against the party to tip off Hillman, I think I'll have another talk with Justin. 
You think he tipped off the FBI? Very probably. In fact, they might even be on their way here right now. You'd better return to your home immediately, Comrade Stettick, before you're dragged into this, too. We're very grateful to you. The control committee's grateful to me. I want to laugh hysterically, because I hate the committee, and I fear it, too. And as I said earlier, fear and hate are the principal bases of communism. Fear your comrades and hate the free world. I love the free world, but I'm barred from it. And I do hate the comrades. So, I walk alone. Dana Andrews will return in just a moment. This is Dana Andrews, friend. In the story you just heard, names, dates, and places are fictitious to protect innocent persons. Many of these stories are based on incidents in the life of Matt Savetic, who worked undercover for the FBI. Next week, another fantastic adventure. Join us then, won't you? Mm-hmm.